So we're focusing in this class on numeric relationships. And the reason for that is that once we start getting into thinking about how we design systems, we really need to understand the numbers that are underneath and some of the sort of formulas and relationships that are going on. We, this, some of this like will be familiar to you. Some of it won't be so familiar, but it'll be a chance just to, um, just to kind of get comfortable with what's going on basically in, in terms of the systems. So we're going to start off with like looking at like the broad numeric relationships that kind of define the different ways resources can have relationships to one another. The same way, like, you know, I can give whatever $100 and that buys me game stock, game stop the stock today um, versus a week ago, it might have been $400 to buy that same share of stock. OK, so that's a relationship where one share equals four hundred dollars and but what it equates to basically changes it fluctuates up and down so it's a dynamic relationship uh, we're going to look at exponential and polyno polynomial formulae and primarily we'll look at exponential that's the main form that's used in games um, and exponential is like i suppose exponential curves and things like that have become very familiar to us since the pandemic started and everyone's kind of aware of like exponential growth, another way to think about it is that it's compounding growth. So one of the things is that like with exponential growth, basically you might have, let's say a hundred people who are sick. And if every person on average passes the sickness onto two people, then the next week you've got another 200 people sick. They pass it on to another 400 people the next week. Okay. That's like a, that's an exponential curve. It basically grows exponentially. And once you start bringing case numbers down, then the, then it also decreases exponentially. Um, we tend not to talk about that as being exponential as much, but it follows a similar curve. It's maybe often not quite as quick, however. Um, and yeah, we're going to look at some maths principles and some things that um, you might be familiar with or you mightn't have thought about. And they're just useful things to think of um, in terms of them being slightly um, slightly interesting things that when we think about how they work, ways to ways to work with them. And then there's time for Q&A. If there's any questions or like anything like that, you can throw it in the Discord, the chat channel. So to start off, we're going to begin with numeric relationships. And this kind of underpins, I suppose, everything around economies. And the most basic form of this is like an identity relationship. Okay, so like, let's say if you add plus one to one number, you get plus one to another number. Okay, so this might be a game where for every, every one gold you spend, you can get one piece of armor or something like that. Okay, that's an identity relationship. It's gold increases by one and armor then increases by one. Okay, so essentially in terms of balance you can think of these numbers as pretty much being the same okay because they don't have they don't have much of an interaction with each other like if you give someone one piece of gold it means they can have one piece of armor you don't have to worry too much about driving the economy out of balance or something like that but it's also maybe not that interesting because like if every time you kill an enemy you get one piece of gold then like it's kind of and that gives you one piece of armor it's your level curve is kind of going to be a bit crazy in terms of like how difficult later stage enemies need to be and stuff like that. Um, so essentially you can think about these as being identical. So this is like what identity, what an identity relationship looks like. And it's really important to say here that like identity is a one to one ratio. Okay. One to anything else is not a identity re relationship basically. Um, and yeah, they're very, we don't use them a whole pile, but you will see them a little bit, but they're, it's useful to know that like that's an identity relationship basically. So then we have linear relationships and these are similar, like it's the same basic concept that when we have one of an item, we get another amount of another item for that. Okay. So here the ratio is constant basically. So if we have one gold, we can buy 10 food with it. And if we have 10 gold, we know we can buy a hundred food. Okay. So this is a, this is a linear relationship. Basically, we always know one gold gives us 10 food. If we want to know how much a hundred food is, we know we divide by 10 and that gives us 10 food. Okay. So it's, they're easy to understand and interpret, but again, um, often, and like 
this might become clearer as we go along but as we as we create linear relationships they can sometimes be kind of boring like so you know one to ten isn't that interesting if gold always kind of costs the same or if you've been or sorry if food always costs the same amount then the economy might not be that interesting so often what games will do is like let's say early on in the game food might cost like one gold for 10 food and as the game goes on food becomes more scarce and it starts to be you need two or three gold to get 10 food or whatever way it might work basically or your one gold might only get you five food as you as you progress through the game as gold gets harder to get or something like that um so here's an example of a linear relationship so it follows the same trajectory pretty much as an identity relationship just the rate it increases by is different and the rate it increases by is just based on whatever that ratio is so that's one to ten so for every one gold you have you increase the number of um the number of food you have by 10 basically okay so kind of straightforward enough this hopefully is a fairly intuitive sort of relationship to think about how we maybe use resources in this sort of way so then the sort of curves we use most as game designers um and what i mean by most is we often will create things as exponential curves first sometimes we'll tweak the individual values in the curve but often the the exponential curve kind of helps us helps us ballpark like get a ballpark feel for where we want the where we want the numbers to be in our game basically and that's what we're trying to do we're trying to figure out what our what our numbers should be for our game um so exponential relationships and the reason they're used a lot in games is basically that it gives the effect of increasing or diminishing returns so the idea is that like you know the the amount of let's say xp required to increase by a level doesn't just increase linearly it's not like 10 xp for every level you know it might be an exp exponential curve so you might go from 10 to maybe then 25 xp for the next level then maybe 40 xp for the next level okay so the the amount you need becomes higher and higher and it creates a sense that you have to work harder for things you're trying to do and it kind of tends to create a more interesting curve basically um and yeah you see this in like rpg leveling curves like bulk buy discounts and stuff like that so if you buy like one of an item it costs you full price the more you buy you kind of can get a discount off each individual item basically and the idea is that when you've one of a value so you get one gold you multiply the other so you might let's say double so a doubling exponential relationship would mean that like each time you add one to one value you you basically double the following value so this table here kind of shows the difference between a doubling and tripling relationship with exponential curves one thing to know is that the the higher the number like even doubling is often too much in games um and often we'll go for a number that's even smaller somewhere between one and two somewhere in that region um but basically we have a value so we have something that's worth let's say sorry we have let's say one gold so under a doubling relationship to buy the first item might cost us one same with tripling okay so at the base they stay very similar if we have two gold let's say the next one then costs us or like to buy our second upgrade it maybe costs us two to do that in a tripling relationship it costs us three if we have three it's four if and then nine so if we've if we're up to our fourth upgrade it's going to cost us eight to do that if we're in a doubling relationship and it'll cost us 27 if we're in a tripling so the numbers sort of increase at like quite a quite an extreme rate and you can see there the the doubling curve is the gray line and that starts to basically accelerate slowly but then the yellow curve there is the tripling line and that accelerates like really really quick so exponential values start to go like crazy high really quickly okay so basically at the start of the pandemic i think like the rate of increase in infection like it was like they're the r values i call it was going from like one person would infect three people so that's that tripling curve and that's why we see when there's like a spike in cases it follows this huge curve and this huge like it just grows and grows and grows really quickly because those three people all three of those infect another three people so from one person within a gen two generations of the virus you're at like nine people or something like that infected okay so it very quickly starts to um starts to ramp up under this sort of relationship 
then there are numbers that we use a lot, especially um, if you were working in board games or something like that. And like digital games to a degree, but triangular relationships. And they give us a similar curve to exponential um, exponential growth, but they're not quite as extreme. So they are, it's a series of numbers. And I'll try and remember how it works again. But basically it is, so yeah, it's like one, two, three, six, 10, 15, 21, 28. And the way it works is the, you add one, sorry, you add the, oh, I'm trying to remember. So for 10, you're adding six and then it's six is the fourth number. So six and four, is that right? Yeah, 10 is the fifth number and it's 10. So you're adding 10 plus 15, right? So you're including, you're adding together the, the place where the number is plus the previous number. Okay, that's kind of what you're doing there. Um, and they tend to be a good first guess. They tend to be useful for working out initial values. Um, yeah, so there's a way that looks, and there's one nice thing about these is there's like a way to visualize these. Okay, so we can think about these, the reason they're triangular numbers is that you can think that each triangular number adds a row of numbers to the, to the item above, basically. Um, and yeah, there's a formula for it, which is T equals N uh, times N plus one divided by two. Okay, so it's, um, there is a formula and stuff. It's they're useful and especially in board games you'll see this a lot that they're used or maybe not used quite so much in digital games but they give us i think i have that graph there um yeah it's the blue on the graph there and hopefully what you can see there is it has this like sort of nice rate of increase where the doubling formula is going to start going kind of crazy pretty soon uh the linear formula is very like flat the the triangular number will actually give us kind of a nice sort of interesting curve. It will allow us to have high numbers early on and kind of keep things keep things some way in check. Basically, it means to get to the next level, you need everything from the last level plus however many levels you have. So, um, it's a useful sort of a useful way to be increasing the numbers basically. So, one thing to know is that each time you're using you're using these sort of ratios and numbers. You want to limit the number of interacting relationships you have, because that is where you might find yourself running into issues with trying to balance a game. So like if you have five different curves and they're all like exponential and stuff like that. So it's like, oh, one gold to food increases at a rate of five to one, but food in relation to, let's say, uh, Maybe armor is a relationship of six to one. And, you know, you might have all these kind of uh, curves that follow different things. That's then how players end up being able to sort of exploit the those ratios and stuff like that. And that's where you'll see sometimes stuff where someone where players figure out ways to like find an infinite gold exploit. It's normally true using these relationships to their advantage that like something gives them more of something and then that's exchangeable for another thing that allows them to buy more of the initial resource than they had at the start. And basically they can focus on that to generate more and more cash. Um, and really what I would say is like a good piece of advice would be to focus on as few numbers as possible in your game. Okay, so like if you can keep the number of variables in your game low and the number of relationships low, it's going to make it easier for you to balance it and kind of create games with small and interesting and tight sort of um, strategic thought and systems like that. Um, and often one way to do this is to consider like primary resources and secondary resources that are derived from these. So like you might think of like, um, let's say you might have a resource and let's say it's gold or something like that. And you might think of then, let's say secondary resources might be like food. And, you know, it's just thinking about that, like, well, really my key resource at there is gold. As long as I control gold in the game, you know, it can be split down into food or whatever else, but nothing else splits back up into gold, basically. So there's ways to think of like things that are derived off a primary resource and you might have a couple of primary resources. So strategy games do this a lot. Like if you ever play a game like Starcraft or something like that, they have two resources and one is like, 
the mineral resource normally and that lets you like build items and create things and then the secondary resource is like a tech resource that controls your growth on the tech tree and how much um how many advanced technology and advanced units you can get out there and stuff like that so they really have two primary resources that they that they then divide down into other things you know all your all your marines and starcraft is just a it's a relationship to the amount of primary resources you have basically um and similarly like if you have marauders or something like that that maybe uses um i can't even remember the names of resources but the other resource then you know that might be um that then tells you your relationship between those two resources basically so instead of having loads of things interacting like starcraft is a huge deep game it really just has two kind of key resources and that is like your your regular resource your building resource and your tech resource okay so try and think of like keeping things as simple as possible um i think i go into this a bit, but one thing like i just want to give a little bit of worry about now is there is often a temptation when we're making games to create like numbers as big as we can so like while we're pre creating characters health we might set the health to 100 or 1000 or something like that and then we have enemies that maybe do 60 damage and we're like oh does 60 feel right or is it 65 maybe 70 feels better and what often is the best way to balance a game and the best way to be thinking about a game is to use like smaller values so to start off with let's say give your player maybe 10 health okay and that way if an enemy does three damage you know they take away one third of your player's damage so you know like three hits and the player is almost out of the game basically and that way then you can start thinking about okay that's interesting let me think about those relationships and how how much damage different different enemies do as a ratio out of 10 and then maybe there's a strong character and that character has 14 health and there's a weak but fast character and they have six health basically keeping things much lower and simpler to balance it will make your life much easier because you're dealing with numbers that are in a much more a much more manageable space and easier to keep in your head as well um so the exponential curve basically this is the formula for it so the cost is the thing you want to get out of this formula okay so you want to figure out how much a unit is going to cost or something like that so then we have a base cost okay so let's say we want to work out um let's say how much xp we need per level so we might say that okay the base cost of our first level is 10 xp so that's our base cost um and that's like the kind of foundational amount like the the number of levels we need then the multiplier is a number we kind of pick out of 10 air in a doubling relationship that's two but it kind of depends and then it's done that multiplier is to the power sorry i should be moving along that's multiplier and then that's um that's calculated basically to the power of the number of them you own so if you own zero uh that is two to the power zero is one so it's just a base cost once you own one i think it's basically two times the base cost and then it kind of goes up like that basically okay so the um the multiplier kind of allows you and the number one allows you to create like this interesting sort of scenario okay so what i'm gonna do is pause the lecture there and i'm gonna uh, ask you to do a little exercise on cookie clicker and you're going to use this formula here cost equals base cost by multiplier to power of number owned to try and figure out what the multiplier is for cookie clicker please don't google because this information is out there um so i don't know are people familiar with cookie clicker if you're not uh where is chrome cookie clicker okay this is cookie clicker we can see here our base cost is 15 and once we have 15 of these we can buy them and it goes up to 18. okay there is some rounding happening here but as long as you get like in the ballpark of the figure we're looking for it should be fine i want you to try and figure out what the what the multiplier is for the cursors and this here is grannies okay so figure out what the multiplier is for the two of those okay so that's your exercise go to ortl.dashnet.org forward slash cookie clicker or else just search cookie clicker try and figure out using 
this formula here exactly what the multiplier is for cookie clicker, for cursors, and for grannies. Okay. 